Hello everybody, today I want to talk about iOS 13. It was announced last week and one of the most interesting things I think for, for myself was the, the, the inclusion of controller support finally for iPad, iPhone and Apple TV. Now when I say controller support, there has been a limited amount of controller support before. I've done a previous video about an MFI controller which is made for iPhone um, which was called the Steel Series Nimbus. But well, iOS 13 now allows you to use uh, PS4 controllers and Xbox controllers uh, via Bluetooth directly straight into iOS 13. So now you haven't got to go out and buy another separate controller, you can just use these. So today I thought what I'm going to do is, is try them in a few uh, games to see how they work. Are they better or worse than the Steel Series Nimbus or basically the same? Now you may think, well I've got a PS4, why would I want to use my controller to, to use it on a tablet? Um, well the reason being of course, we all go on holiday, we have to go out for a day, and maybe you want to take your games with you. So this allows you to be able to do that. The first thing I want to show you is how easy it is to connect your controller to iOS 13. So what we're going to do is go into settings, go, here we are on Bluetooth. I'm going to press here the share button and the PlayStation button at the same time, hold them down for a few seconds, and you'll see that the controller will flash like that at the front, and you can see it says here, DualShock 4 wireless controller, so I'm gonna hit on that, and this will connect, and it's connected. Right, so now we're gonna fire up again, we're gonna open up Fortnite, which is actually already there, and you can see already that, just by using the buttons, I can scroll through all the menus. All right, let's kick up again, to show you it working. Here I'm in the controller settings and I've got it set to custom but let's just go to what I would normally use which is build the pro. And as you can see the controller works everything here fine. I said I press this button like I would on the PlayStation no map. So what we need to do is go into options go to the controller again and I need to go down to custom. Now in my custom controllers I've already got it set up so that the right button is for map and the down button is for crouch because you need those are pretty important things. So when I go back now, if I use the right button, I can actually see my map and use the lower button here to crouch up and down. So the bumper buttons basically work exactly the same as, as they would on your PlayStation. This one works the same. Now the big, biggest difference is finding that configuration which works for you where you can do the crouch and you can get your map up. Now that might mean losing something else, so you've got to decide really what you, you're going to lose. So that's a quick look at the PS4 controller working with Fortnite. So it's really exactly the same as the MFI controller. Now let's do the same with the Xbox. We'll go back to our settings. We're going to power up the Xbox controller. We're going to go to Bluetooth. it now with the Xbox wireless controller. So now we're going to try exactly the same. Okay let's load up Fortnite again then and see how this one works. Okay so same idea, bumper buttons are working fine. Let's pop into a game. Okay let's just have a look at our controls here, our settings and you can see we're still in custom. Let's go back up to a Builder Pro, which is the one I'd normally use, apply it, and let's just try using it with Builder Pro. If I use these buttons like you would, again on Xbox, it doesn't crouch. If I use this one for the map, there's nothing. The right hand one still works here for your menu, so what we're going to have to do again is go back to the controller and use my custom one. And then we're using the up and down button to crouch right hand one for the map. Now as I say you can assign those to whatever you want but it's, it's a workaround. Now I don't know whether this issue is um, an Apple issue or whether it's uh, a Fortnite issue. So that's using the Xbox controller and the PlayStation controller uh, on Fortnite on iOS 13. It's very easy to do, very easy to set up but it doesn't offer you anything extra than the uh, MFI controller that I previously tested offers. These buttons are still not working. Next up we're going to have a quick look at real racing. And here you can see connected to Xbox wireless controller. 
So this is going to work straight out of the box. Okay, so now let's just go to our settings, Bluetooth, disconnect this device, and reconnect this one. Okay, so now we've reconnected the DualShock 4. So we're just going to see if this works with this controller. Yes, is it connected with the DualShock 4 wireless controller? So this game works with both of the controllers. And finally, that's going to just quickly fire up PUBG. Okay, it'll do. Doesn't matter. I'm not bothered about clothes. I just want to see how the game works with the PS4 controller. Sure, what's going on here? Everything seems very slow. I can't run. Okay, so don't waste your time downloading PUBG because it just doesn't work with a controller. So before you go downloading lots of games from the App Store and seeing if they work, there's a website here called mfigames.com and they list on there some of the games that you can definitely use a controller with. It might be really nice in the future if we could actually see what games uh, are compatible. We could have some kind of logo here to say that the controller compatible. That would really help, I think, particularly because I think once this is launched in September, there's going to be a lot more people who want to be able to use a controller because they've already got one. I'm going to test now if you can uh, use the sound through the headphones uh, directly through the controller rather than put them into the tablet. So let's just try that. I don't think it will work, to be honest, but let's just try it. Well, it hasn't muted the sound on the iPad. Let's just try it now. No, there's no, there's no sound. So if you're hoping to do this, it's not going to work. Well, you're going to have to rely on plugging it into uh, your tablet. The last thing I want to show you today is this great app called PS4 Remote. And what it allows you to do is to control your PlayStation basically from your iPad screen. Now you've been able to do this for a while, but now you can do it with your PS4 controller. You've got full complete control over all the menus, all the buttons work except for the touchpad, which I've not been able to get to work. Let's boost up a quick game of Apex just to show you how it looks. This is a really good app to download if you've got PS4, so you want, if you want to play in another room, or if you want some privacy, or the screen's being used, for instance, say it's in your lounge and your screen's being used by a partner or, or, or somebody else in your family to watch something else, you can still play your PS4. Yeah, Obviously you're going to be playing on a smaller screen, um, which can be restrictive in some games, but also depending on what size of tablet you've got. But overall, there was a little bit of lag now and again, but I, I guess that's going to happen, but overall it's a really good experience, it's definitely worth downloading, especially now that we've got this PS4 controller support. Now I have only tested this on the iPad because I'm not upgrading my iPhone yet to iOS 13. Uh, I need, I use my phone every day for my business and I don't want uh, any bugs or anything to interfere with that. So I thought I'll give it a test on the iPad. But the same support is going to be there for uh, iPhone. So everything basically I've shown you on iPad will be the same on iPhone. Now iOS 13 will probably hit around mid to late September. Usually it's about the same kind of time as when they announce the next iPhones. But if you do want to use this feature straight away, you're desperate, you can sign up for the Apple Beta Development Program. It costs, uh, I think it's £79 for the year or $79, I'm not 100% sure, but you sign up for that and it gives you access to all their uh, developer things so you get all the latest downloads and everything like that. You might find online there's some people where you can do it for free and things but whether you're getting a genuine one I don't know. I wouldn't want to risk it on my phone for the price you have to pay. But this is going to come free in September so if you can wait till then all well and good. Uh, iOS 13 overall is looking really nice. Um, I've had it on there for like a week now and it's been really stable. I've not had any bugs or crashes. Everything seems to be working great. The dark mode's really nice. 
Uh, I think it's a really good update and with a controller support as well, it's a total bonus. Thanks so much for watching. Please uh, give me a like if you like the video, subscribe to my channels and if you've got any questions which I didn't cover in this video then please post them below and I'll do my best to answer them. Uh, thanks very much for watching, see you soon.